Hello YouTube and welcome back to Super Lurkana World. This is your one-stop shop for Vang Lurkana. And today, I want to talk about how good is Mufasa. This was a card that was revealed and I like this card a lot. I don't know if it's the best card in the world, but I like it and it opens a lot of potential for interesting deck building. And I will tell you what I mean in this video. But what do you guys think? You think Mufasa's good? Bad? Too high roll? Not good enough? Let, let me know what you think in the comments. And of course, like and subscribe, that'd be really cool. All right, so we have Mufasa here. Mufasa is a five drop inkable three through that quest for two. Its stats aren't anything amazing for a five drop. They're, they're, they're okay, they're nothing crazy. It's its ability that makes it really shine or set the sun or whatever. When this character is banished, you may reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a character card, you may play that character for free and they enter play exerted. Otherwise, put it on top of your deck. So when you think about this card, you think, okay, I could play this in my Amber deck. It could get me value when it dies. I could get a really big character and get really reward. I could get a really small character and I guess it's better than nothing. That is one way you can look at it. Or there's the, there's the fun route. The fun route is a world where you build some kind of high rolly big drop deck. Uh, as a Digimon player myself, primarily, we have this deck in Digimon called Mega Zoo, and it takes different iterations, uh, set after set. But basically, when it's playable, it's a deck that focuses on playing high character, high creature cards, because usually the point of Digimon is digivolving from three to four to five to six. But we have these decks where you just hard play your level fives, level sixes, and try to get value out of them. And sometimes there are some synergies, like we have a really good one currently in the game uh, called Royal Knights. That lets you take advantage of all that. Um, this deck seems, this card seems like a more high rolly version of enabling that to happen. And the whole point now is picking a secondary ink that would make that work. I'm going to be the first person to tell you that right now, we may not have the tools to make this work in all of its glory. I'll tell you what we do got. I'll tell you what we can do right now with the cards that we know. But this card also isn't super future-proofed either, right? It's possible that we get start getting some like crazy 12, 13, 14, 15 drop characters in the in the game. And then Mufasa, if there's a way to manipulate your deck, is looking pretty good, I'm gonna tell you. But you know, let's see what we got right now. So the whole point of this card is getting it banished, which means your opponent is likely not going to attack into it, because it's only a 3-3 that's like, questing for two. It's nothing crazy. So you'll either have to you'll have to find some way to deal with it yourself, which um, could be done if you can attack other characters. Good way to do it, or banish them yourselves. Uh, an example in color would be World's Greatest Criminal Mind, a card that you can sing for free on Mufasa that says banish chose a character with five attack or more. Now you might be saying Mario, it's got three attack. What are you doing? Well, you can buff it. There are cards that buff attack. This is just one random option, you know what I mean? Maybe not the best thing, but it is in ink that you can do that. Support does exist. So, what else do we got? Well, you could pair it with Amethyst. Amethyst is interesting because of Ursula's Cauldron, where you look at the top two cards of your deck, put one on top, one on the bottom. Anything that does that is interesting in the sense that you could potentially stack your Mufasa, or stack what you want to grab with your Mufasa. You could... You get two choices, you get one of them, right? And then if you like what you see, then you can get rid of Mufasa that turn and then get a really cool card like Elsa or something because at this point you're limiting yourself to Amethyst. But I like Ursula's Cauldron and, and Mufasa. I think it's a cool combo. And anything that can do this is a cool combo. But what else do we got? Well, we got Steel. I have Pick a Fight here. Chosen character can challenge ready characters this turn. I like Steel a lot, because if you're, if, you're, if you're building a Mufasa high roll deck, if you have that, that's what you want to do. Well, you need to find some way to like deal with early aggro. And Steel is actually one of the best inks to do that. So that way you don't get aggroed up by the time you start popping off with Mufasa's here. Pick a fight is an easy way for you to do that. Because For two costs, you just say, yeah, my Mufasa can just run into whatever I want. And it does it. And it does deal damage with it too. Which means that you can maybe follow it up with something else and kill a bigger character that's unsuspended. It's a thing you could do. 
and pick a fight is the enabler that lets you do that because the opponent might be smart and not suspend their characters or will only suspend characters that Mufasa can, you know, kill without being killed themselves. So I think it's a really interesting strategy. And then we have the whole slew of ruby cards. We have Dinner Bell. Dinner Bell is a four cost item, but after you play it, you can tap it and play it, pay two. You draw cards equal to damage on chosen character of yours and banish them. Now, you might not draw anything with Mufasa unless you run into something small first, but it does banish it for you, and then you get the effect. Uh, Ruby just has no kind of real deck control, which is unfortunate, but if you want to blow up your stuff, this is the card to do it. You can also Dragonfire yourself. I don't recommend that, but like you could do that. You can also be prepared, right? You can be prepared the whole board with Mufasa on it, and then you get Mufasa. Maybe you can get two Mufasas and you be prepared. You wipe the whole board, and then you get two characters. That's pretty cool, maybe. Like, that could be something you do. So, I think the important part to look at now, now that we learned about what inks probably work better with it, how, how do you take advantage of it? Well, let's look at what we've got in the game so far. We have Maleficent, where you play, you blow something up. Could be good, let's just be prepared. Goofy. <laughs> you know, a big Goofy, if we're playing the Steel Root, could be a very nice top end. Got Evasive Mickey Mouse, could be cool. Uh, villain Hades, if you want to play a villain deck. I doubt, it. I doubt it'll fit the theme, but, like, it's there. Gone to here. Characters are too cost or less, can't challenge your characters. I don't know if that comes up so much. Maui's like a worse Goofy. Uh, it, it literally is. Uh, we have Scar. I doubt that'll come up. Elsa's really good. And if you can find a way to play Emerald, the Genie's obviously really good. But then it forces you to play actions, and actions kind of conflict with Mufasa, because if you do refuel an action, it whiffs. So maybe this is not the best card for you. So far, my favorite candidates are Maleficent and Goofy, maybe Mickey Mouse and Elsa. But if you keep going down the list, you know, you got things like Aladdin, could be a good card. You got things like Stitch, it's a good card. You got things like Captain Hook, it's got Rush, maybe it comes into play, maybe, you never know. Uh, Dr. Facilier. Uh, I like this a lot. It, it seems really gimmicky. But, like, say you have a Facilier on board already, and, like, you use Mufasa to run into something. Well, it doesn't really work, right? Well, it does work. It gets banished in a challenge. You return it to your hand. You just do it all over again. It's slow, but, like, it works. I don't know how I feel about it. It seems gimmicky. Seems really, really, really convoluted. You get an Ursula, you can get, I don't know, if you find a way to do it with Sapphire, Hades is fine. Seems okay. Steel, you get Cinderella, you get Scar, Scar is really good. You get freaking Madame Mim, if you can pull that off. That would be really cool. And yeah, now we start getting the things that, uh, you know, cost six, like the Queen of Hearts, it's whatever. Stitch is good, it's Amber, it's fine, maybe, who knows. Um, may, maybe, maybe, I don't know, nothing else here really stands out. Tinkerbell is good if you're playing Steel. Yeah. There are, so yeah, there are good options. There are good choices. It's just a matter of the deck building, right? And you have to decide, you have to think about it, whether or not this is the high rolly deck for you. I think there's something here, but I want to see what else comes out in the set. And if nothing else, it'll be just a fun, gimmicky, win more deck. That isn't very good, but maybe you'll get a few last chuckles out of it. If we get some real support to back it, though, it could be a monster. Right now, it just seems okay at best, but that could change. Mufasa is a card that seems that it will adjust with the game as we come out. And if we ever do get some crazy nonsense, well, Mufasa might be a really cool character to look at. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. I'll see you later. Bye!